And there's, I'm going to just make this interjection. There's nothing like being in the will of God, and there's nothing like being out of the will of God. Amen? I'm going to tell you, there's something about being in His patience. Knowing that maybe not everybody else gets it, but knowing that you're at His perfect peace and understanding. Verse 12 says, Give thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of His inheritance of the saints and the light. Oh, there's a great day of coming. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. Folks, you all may be seated this morning. I, I, I want to ask this question. Do you want to know the will of God for you, for your family, for this church, for, this, for your workplace, for this community, for this county? Oh, for this country and for this world. I just pray that the only answer that I have to give anybody is that is if we would turn our eyes to the Lord. Because some are saying, what are we going to do? I feel like we're just going at a tailspin, going down. And I guess, are we just going to wait until we crash or until everything just falls apart? No, my friends. Paul says that those that have accepted Jesus Christ, I pray that you would be in step with him in his will and knowing that we have a wonderful place called heaven to be with his son. But while you're here sometimes, even as believers, it is often a constant struggle. I feel like sometimes... Uh, it's, 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 uh, uh, I told y'all a couple weeks ago, I feel bipolar in many ways that sometimes I, I, when I'm the highest, I'm the highest. And whenever I'm feeling the yuckiest, I'm the yuckiest. Whenever I'm, whenever I'm compassionate, I'm the compassionate. Whenever I'm the maddest, I'm the maddest. Whenever there's so many emotional seasons and all these things. And sometimes we're just saying, Lord, it seems like a constant struggle because it's not always a neon sign saying, here, here. Here, here. Or maybe it is that simple. And we're just so blind to see it. I, I pray that it wouldn't be just that constant struggle within because I wrestle with what my will is in the flesh and what God's will is in the spirit. And we must be want, mindful that we weigh the pros and the cons of our decisions, not just if I do this it might impact me, but if I do this, who all will be impacted by my decision? Do we think of others? Do we think of others more than ourselves? First, we should think of God and others and all this. So always saying, Lord, in finding your will, sometimes it goes and it rubs the cat's fur backwards. But I want to make sure that I'm doing it your ways and walking in your direction. And, and, and sometimes we're just... E we're just Looking for the easy door, and we're looking for the path of least resistance. Folks, unfortunately, many have said, God, I've heard this prayer. I know you have too. Lord, if this is your will, I just pray it all just goes smooth. That, Lord, if you've just opened the door for me, that this door would just open. It just swing on WD-40 greased hinged, and it just slide right open, and no problems, no nothings, and so forth. And if it does that, it must be your will. Listen, God never promised the disciples that everything was going to go easy. But there's something that knowing that even in, if it's hard, even if it's difficult, that doesn't mean that it is of God. doesn't mean that it has to be hard. doesn't mean that it has to be a fight and a struggle. But whenever you're in his perfect peace and in his perfect will, whether it is sunny outside or whether it is rainy and drizzling, there's something about being in the perfect peace and the will of God. I'd much rather be in the worst storm with the highest waves and capsizing waters, knowing that I'm in the will of God, than I would be on the sunniest beach with a cool drink in hand and out of the will of God. But hear me, Christian, it doesn't mean that just because you're on the beach and sun's shining and things are going good means that you're out of the will of God. That doesn't, so many times we have an obscured view of saying, well, if you're not having trouble, you're not serving God. No. And if everything's going okay, you must be living right. No. See, they, they got that mixed up all throughout the Old Testament. There's just something about seeking Him and receiving 
him. And then when you've got confirmation and clarity, that's always my prayer, is that, Lord, I don't have to understand it. I don't always have to like it. But what I pray and what I seek for myself and what I seek for others, this is what Paul's saying, I pray for confirmation and clarity that this is the Father's will and I want to walk in the will of the Father. But so many times I just wonder if we make our choices, if we're looking to honor Him or if we're just merely looking for things to comfort ourselves. Many times we seek for comfort more than confirmation. Well, folks, we as God's children, we must understand God's will for our life shouldn't be misunderstood. And God's not playing peekaboo. He's not playing hide-and-go-seek, saying, find me out, figure me out if you can. No, He's right there. He wants to share with us His will. And we've got to be willing to seek it. So as God's children, we must understand that God's will for our lives and understand that it is not ambiguous, meaning... That God's will is not double-minded. He's not going to tell you to do something contrary to this book, number one. He's not going to tell you to do something contrary to what the Holy Spirit's leading. He's not going to tell you to do something contradictory to His will and His works and His way and that of the life of Jesus Christ. And if you are trying to say, I just feel like it's led of the Lord that I'm supposed to do this. Some of the very good gauges are, is that number one, does it line up with His Word? Is this of the Holy Spirit? Is this of myself? Am I seeking good Christian godly counsel before I make these decisions? And just seek out, saying, Lord, it's got to pass the smell test, and I've got to make sure that it's lining up in your will and in your way. So how do you ensure that you're staying close in fellowship with God? I'm, I'm glad you asked, because the first thing that we must do is if you really want to be in the will of God... You've got to give yourself completely to Him. Would you say that with me this morning? If you want to do it, now don't just say it just because I'm asking you to, but if you really want to know the will of God, would you repeat that with me? Give yourself to Him completely. Not half-heartedly. Don't just say, Lord, I'm going to give, yourself, I'm going to give myself to you on the good days. I'm going, to give yourself, I'm going to give myself to you when things are going good and things. No, you've got to be sold out. God says, the very first words that he says to his disciples was, follow me. How close are you following him? How close are you following him? I, I wonder if we're following Christ as closely as we need to be. And, when, and then we wonder... How he gets off in the distance. I want to follow him. I want to, be, I want to be so in step with him. Sometimes, you know, there's hunters in here. And when you go tracking, you're looking for signs. You're looking for a blood trail. You're looking for broken limbs. You're looking for uh, uh, prints and marks in the ground. You're, you're looking and you're seeking him. I want to stay so close to him that I'm in. When, he's taking, when, his, when his toe's coming out of one step of the footprint, I want my heel to be stepping right in right behind him. And often we just we fall away and we get out of step with him. Oh, my goodness, I want to follow him so closely. I want to be on his heels, so to speak. I want to be just clinging to his thigh, just holding on. I want to be in his will, and I know you do too. We must be seeking him as his children. And we must be saying, Lord, I want to be so close to you that I hear your voice. I hear your telling me what to do. I hear and listen to your instructions and not that of the world. You know, there's a, there's a picture cartoon, there's an illustration that I know that many of y'all have seen over the years and so forth of that, of an individual standing and you see their head and shoulders. And on this shoulder, you have a little devil that's over here and he's got the pitchfork and that's not what the devil looks like by any sense of the means. But you've got this little demon or this little devil over here whispering all these things in their ear. And then you see the little angel, which I think a representation of the Holy Spirit over here on this side. And, and, I, and I just have to say that they're all competing for our direction. And, and, and you have to decide, who are you going to listen to? When we go on a journey, I'm an android and she's an apple, okay? And it's amazing to me when I can put in the instructions in my phone to get me to a destination and she can put in the instructions in her phone how to get to a destination, how many times it will say turn here or turn there and my phone and her phone is telling us to turn here and turn there. I've made the mistake of trying to go my own way. 
I've just figured I'd rather listen to two women than I would listen to my old android. Amen? I, I, I mean, just say, look, you need to do what I'm telling you to do. And folks, sometimes uh, we need to put hard-headedness aside and say, you know what, I'm guilty of this. I need to be mindful and I need to be listening to the Holy Spirit's leading and guiding as He is not going to lead you in a wrong direction and He's not going to lead you to get lost. What we need to do is we just need to take that old devil and get him out of our ear. And who is speaking in your ear? Who's whispering in your ear? Is, is this of God or is this of the devil? Does it line up with God's Word? I'm going to tell you what, won't you just do this with me this morning? Devil... Get off. Get lost, devil. I don't have time. I don't have time to give you my ear. I don't have time to listen to your problems. I don't have time to listen to your negativity and your doubt and I can'ts and I won'ts. Lord, I don't want to give this ear to the devil and this ear to God. I want to give both ears to God. Can I hear an amen to that? I want to be so listening to God and in step with God, following Him so closely. How do you do that? James says in James 4, 7 and 8 says, Submit. Remember, you've got to be completely sold out. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's, it's, it, listen, you can bank on it. It's a promise that if you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, say it out loud, in the name of Jesus Christ, devil, you are not welcome here. Now, he's not fearful of Jason. He's not fearful of you. You can put your name in there, whoever's name, but he is fearful of Jesus. And if we go in the name of Jesus Christ, devil, you are not welcome in my life. You are not to give me false directions and false images. I want to go in your way. Draw nigh, draw near to God, and he will draw near unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We need to note that God is not going to tell you to do one thing today and then tell you to do something else tomorrow. Our God does not change. He is who He says. So we've got to be completely sold out in this Christian life, in this Christian walk, <coughs> to note that we want to be in His will, and it goes against the grain of the world. How many of y'all in here have seen the series, The Chosen. Anybody in here watching any of The Chosen? Oh, golly, guys, we're going to have to have a Chosen Fest here. But at the very beginning of it, in the opening credits and so forth, you see all these igthus. It's the fish. You see all the, the fish-shaped symbol and so forth. And that comes from the early Christians and so forth. And you see all these fish going like this, and they're all flowing with the water. And then you see a fish going in the opposite direction. You see, Christ calls us to go against the ways of the world, to go against the grains of the ways of our thinking. And so how do you know that? The Bible says we, uh, what we need to do is this, as Paul's teachings would tell us, number one, we are to be completely sold out to him, but we also are to not conform to the world's standards. Do you really want to do that? I'm going to ask you to say the second point with me. Would you say it with me right now? Refuse to be conformed to the world standards. The world will say go this way, go this way, go this way. But God says no. Go this way. Go the other direction. He, he's not telling us this. Don't go in the ways of strategies and uh, uh, the, the, to achieve your goals and climb the ladder that way. Listen, God will establish your foundations. He will put you in places and, and positions, and He will do that. How do you know? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you. Hey, I'm pleading with you. I'm pleading with you. Paul says, I'm pleading with you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's what we signed up to do. See, just coming on board to say, I want to be saved is great. I want to see you in heaven. I really do. But whenever you say, I, don't want, to, I, I want to come and be saved, I want to also come and to serve. I want to be in His will. I want to be in His walk so that I may be an example of what others should do and walk in the same fashion, because I'm going to tell you what, people are walking in your footsteps as well. In your home, 
in your workplace, the catchphrases, the things we say, our little slogans, our little logos. And I just wonder, are we an encourager or are we a discourager, the things that come out of our mouth? Are we edifying and uplifting or are we always condemning and criticizing? I, I, I hope and pray that we would go against the world's standards, uh, that we would look to God and conform and, and, and just say, Lord, I want to be conformed to you and not to the ways of this world. But there's a third and final point that I have for you this morning. Oh, there's still some more scripture. I'm sorry. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. I want to be so in step with the will of God. I know you do too, and I pray that our church would be so in step, so following closely, so in His Word, so in prayer, so inviting of the Holy Spirit, so much in song, so much in everything that we do, every activity, to not be conformed to where the world can't tell the difference between us and the church. I mean, what's the difference? Some will say we, the church today looks just like the world. Folks, we are called to be different. But there's a third and final point this morning. How do you be conformed? You've got to be transformed. And you can't do it on your own. You can't, you can't just say, today I'm going to make a change. Today I've made New Year's resolutions. I'm going to have a fresh start. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And many of us have set out with our own resolutions. I'm not saying that that's wrong to have some goals. But I'm going to tell you, when it comes to this, the devil will say, you have your little ways right now. You'll go good for a month or two. Maybe you can overcome a few things. And you can do some things on your own. But I'm going to tell you, the only way you're ever really going to be able to have a relationship with God and to know His will is you've got to be completely sold out, conformed, and transformed to say, God, I can't do this on my own. The devil's awful crafty, and he knows shiny things that I like to get distracted with and deterred with. And I've just got to say, Lord, if I could transform on my own, I wouldn't need you. Listen, if I could quit doing all my bad habits, if I could quit doing all my uh, thought processes and all my activities and all that, and then whenever I do, then I'll come to the Lord. Folks, you'd never come to Him. Folks, the Bible says, come as you are. Be transformed. Lord, I can't. I fought these addictions. I fought these problems. I fought this mindset. I fought this aggravations. I fought my demons, and I've listened to them far too long. And I might be able to reject them for a little while, but they always seem to come back, and they come back with vengeance. Lord, I pray that I would be transformed. I pray that I would be changed. I pray that I would be made as an adjustment. I want to be transformed by the Holy Spirit, don't you? Would you say that with me this morning? Be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Guys, I need your attention. This is too important. I want to share with you one of my favorite verses. And I have to reference it and I have to come back to it so often. How do I get transformed? I love you too much to just let this slide by. I love you too much to just say, okay, I'm on my third point. We're fixing to dismiss and I'm fixing to call for musicians. I love you too much because I know right now the devil is doing everything he can to distract. He's going to try to disturb your mind. He's going to get you thinking about dinner. He's going to get you thinking about this evening. He's going to get you thinking about the world's problems, the economy, gas prices, foods, all that stuff. He's going to get you thinking about all this other stuff. Listen to me. Please hear this. Church, we've got to get our eyes on Jesus Christ. In every step and in every action and all that we do. We have to be mindful of His will and His ways and the things that He's called us to do. How do you do that? Please, please, please write this down. There should be a pen in front of you. There should be something there. Key it in on your phone. Make it your screensaver. I want to share with you a verse of Scripture. That I have to cling to and I have to reference back to. And I have to look at so often. Some of you, you may say, this is going to be my new favorite verse of Scripture as well. Philippians chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. How do we be transformed? How do we do that? Listen, it doesn't happen overnight. It, it, it's a process. Let me just be very, very clear. When I got saved, before I read this, I was ugly. Some people talk about their past so much you think they miss it. 
I was a sinner. That's enough. I'm not going to glorify any of the things that I did. I'm not going to glorify the things that I said. I'm not going to glorify the places that I've been. It's just, you know why people act the way they do? Because they don't know Jesus Christ. And I did the same thing. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. You say, that was weird. It was a bush that was burning, but it wouldn't consume. Why did God speak to him through a burning bush? Listen, maybe Moses had a thing for bushes. Maybe that was just some way that God used to speak to him and to talk to him. For me, I was going into auto mechanics. I was going into auto technology. I grew up, I built my, my first car was a 69 Impala. I bought it, but I took the engine out of it. My second car, I built it out of a junkyard. Bought it, worked all summer, built it, built a motor, put it all together, and it was my first car out of a junkyard. I was going to be a mechanic. My hot rod buddies and all this other stuff. I like cars, so guess what? The best way for God to speak to me was one of two ways, a girl or a car, and he kind of spoke to both. And, 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 I, and I'm just going to say that when I had the car, all my hot rod buddies, all my hot rod mechanics, whenever I went, I, I, I never will forget talking to them. They worked at the auto parts stores, and the, I mean the, the mechanic places stuff. They would change seven spark plugs, but they wouldn't get to that eighth one underneath the heater box, so they just left the new plug in the box and wouldn't change it. I'm somebody that I have to watch it. I want to make sure that it's operating and working correctly. I got to make sure that it is what it is. So I took my truck at the time, I took my car, or my truck rather, to have the radiator fluid changed. I'll never forget this. God took this radiator. Illustration. Took loose the top hose. And he attached, they, they attached this top hose. They hooked up another bottom hose. And then there was this machine that was sitting over there from the top of the engine then coming out of the radiator. And over here was this machine. He hit the start button and walked off. I'll never get over this. He walked off and he's over there pretty good little distance away. And he left me standing there underneath the hood. Now in this tube here, it was bright fluorescent green. But over here in this other container was a rusty, murky-looking brown color. And as I'm standing there, and I'm waiting, and I'm watching, it seemed like forever. I had just gotten saved. I, I, I mean, I'd just gotten to know the Lord. I just came in connection with Him. And I'm standing there, and I'm watching, and, 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 and I'm looking at this. And then the guy came out to do something. He was washing his hands, and I hollered at him. I said, hey, 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 how do you know when this thing's finished? And he said these words, and it was like a jolt from the Lord that said, when what's going in looks like what's coming out, you know it's finished. Folks, when I got saved, I didn't quit cussing all at once. I didn't quit drinking all at once. I didn't quit carousing all at once. Some people do. Cold turkey. Praise God for that. But I didn't know any better. And for me, I had to flush out the old, and I had to replace it with new. I had to replace old habits with new habits. Old people with new people. People that cared and was investing into me, my family, my life, my lifestyle and things. It wasn't the same when I said that. It came out and it felt dirty. It felt na And it was. It was wrong. When I went there, it didn't seem right. God and the Holy Spirit was working on me and changing it in me. And why? Because I had made a connection and I'd gotten with God. God spoke to me through a radiator flush. And I'm going to tell you this. This verse of Scripture is the same thing. Sometimes I need that continual flush. In fact, I need that flush every day. Listen, I pick up elements in this world. You know why? Because I live in this world. I see things on TV. I can't even pick up my phone without seeing some kind of negativity anymore that gets embedded into my mind. I wish I didn't see it. So why do I keep picking it up? I don't know. It's a habit. I, I wish that I didn't see some of these. What goes in is what? What comes out. How much of God are you putting in? How much of the world are you consuming in? And then we wonder why we act and think the way that we do. Listen, we've got to put as much God in as we can. Listen to what this verse of Scripture says. Philippians 4, 7, 8 says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. You want to be in the will of God? You stay and walk and stay in step with God. Listen to this. I love this. Write this down. Philippians 4, 7, and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. I'm tired of the false, aren't you? You don't even know what to believe anymore. I want to believe the truth. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. 
Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there's anything to this, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Where your heart is, there is your treasure also. Listen, hear me clear. If you focus on your problems, you'll forget your God. But if you focus on your God, you'll forget your problems. Which one are we bending an ear to? Folks, today I want to encourage you. Focus on Jesus and the cross. The cross of Calvary. Focus on the positive. Focus on the things. Because I'm going to tell you what. Where your head goes, your body will follow. And what you're looking, your eyes, your ears and things. I want to walk and step. Hear me clearly. Musicians, if you would, would you come? I want to be in the will of God. Sometimes I get out of step. I'm guilty. Anybody else in here guilty of getting out of step with God sometimes? Can I see any honesty? I want to follow him. Even the closest, Peter, one of the disciples right there at the last, denied him three times and got away from him. God's grace forgave him. And I just remember his distance was just getting a little bit further. A little bit further he denied a little bit further until everybody just denied and went away from him. We've got to be following in step with God. Let me just ask you, how close are you with him right now? Number one, are you even in a relationship with him? I invite you to come and get connected, get to know Jesus Christ. And I think sometimes maybe we started out good. We were strong. We were side by side. We were arm in arm. We were buddy and pal. We were king and, king and servant. And we were right there. But after a while, we began to listen to the ways of the world and we began to drift. What do we got to do? One of the best illustrations that I have is that of the old man and the old woman riding in the bench seat pickup truck. She's over there with her arm on the windowsill and he's there driving and she says, looks over at him and says, Honey, do you remember when we was young? I used to ride right there on the console. You had your hand on my knee. I had my hand on the radio. You used to let me touch it then. And we were... So close, you had your arm around me, and I had my hand on your thigh, that's what it was, and we were so close, and we were so in love, and we were just going down the road, and now look at us, we're so far apart, look at this division, look at this separation, what happened to us? And the old man looks up at her and says, I haven't went anywhere. You see, it's often us who begins to drift and go to the other side. God is still here, He still loves you, and He wants that one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. I want to be in the will of God, I want to be in step with God, and if you want that, one, won't you just get saved today? Make Him your God. Make Him, not, He says, follow me. Follow me. That's not just in the beginning, it's every day of our life. And if you don't know, maybe you're here this morning. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. But maybe you've just got some life decisions you've got to make. This altar's open. And if you really want to know what God's will is for your life, what is it that you, He wants you to do? Maybe you're saying, I've been trying to do it my way. How's that going? Why don't you just come and ask Him? Would you stand with me all over the church house? I'm here to pray with you if you like. But it, maybe you just need to take somebody by the hand.